Hello developers. Have you ever clicked a link on a website and felt that boring white flash between pages? That moment where the whole experience just breaks. In this video, I am fixing that problem using GSAP. So what will you learn here? I am going to show you how to block default link behavior, how I control page navigation using promises, and how I synchronize entrance and exit animations using one reusable transition system. And the use cases are huge. I am building a smooth page transition system where the old page closes with an animation and the new page opens with a matching reveal. I am creating this cinematic shutter effect using simple HTML blocks, some smart CSS, and a clean GSAP timeline. Instead of letting the browser instantly jump to the next page, I am intercepting the click, playing the animation, and only then moving to the next screen. You can use this on portfolios, agency websites, product pages, or any site where you want the navigation itself to feel like part of the design. So if you want your website to feel less like separate pages and more like one continuous experience, this project is going to change the way you think about page transitions forever. Now let me explain the HTML structure in a simple way. At the top, I have a div with the class transition container. This is the full screen overlay that I use to animate between pages. Inside it, I create two rows called transition row row one and transition row row two. Each row contains five divs with the class block. These blocks act like animated shutters that open and close during the page transition. After that, I have the main tag. This holds the real page content like navigation and the page title. Inside nav, I place the logo on the left and the navigation links on the right. These links are the ones I intercept to trigger the transition animation. Then I have the title section with a big heading that shows the current page name. Finally, at the bottom, I load GSAP and my app script file. This is where all the page transition logic lives. Now let me explain the CSS in a clean and simple way. At the top, I import two fonts, one for the big title and one for the navigation links. This gives the page a strong visual personality. Then I reset all margins, paddings, and box sizing. This keeps the layout consistent everywhere. For the main tag, I make it full screen and center everything using flex. This places the big page title perfectly in the middle. The nav bar is fixed at the top, stretched across the screen, and placed above the content using Ziba index. This keeps navigation visible during transitions. All anchor tags are styled to be uppercase, white, and monospaced. This creates a clean, minimal menu. The heading is styled to be huge and bold, giving each page a strong identity. Now for the transition overlay. The transition container is fixed and covers the whole screen. I disable pointer events so it never blocks clicks. Inside it, I split the screen into two rows and each row into multiple blocks. These blocks are the shutters that animate during page transitions. Finally, I set different transform origins for the top row and bottom row. This makes the top blocks collapse downward and the bottom blocks collapse upward, creating that curtain closing effect. Now let me explain the JavaScript logic that controls the navigation. First, I wait for the page to fully load using document add event listener with DOM content loaded. This ensures all links are ready before I attach any logic. Then I select all anchor tags on the page and loop through them one by one. For every link, I add a click listener. When a link is clicked, I first read its HRFF value. If the link is empty or pointing to the same page or just a hash link, I do nothing. Otherwise, I prevent the browser from navigating instantly. Instead, I play my transition animation. Once the animation finishes, I manually change the page using window location HRF. This is how I make the page transition feel smooth instead of abrupt. Now I am preparing the blocks for the first page load. First, I make all the blocks visible and set their vertical scale to one. This means the shutter overlay is fully covering the screen when the page opens. Then I run the reveal transition. This plays the opening animation where the blocks collapse away to show the page. Once that animation finishes, I hide all the blocks again. This keeps the overlay invisible until the next navigation happens. Now let me explain how the reveal transition actually works step by step. I start by creating a function called reveal transition. This function returns a promise, so I can wait for the animation to finish before doing anything else. Inside the promise, I create a GSAP timeline. I also attach on complete resolve, which means the promise is completed the moment the animation ends. Now I animate the top row first. I target all blocks inside row one and animate their vertical scale from one to zero. 
This makes them collapse upward and reveal the page. I give this animation a duration of one second and add a stagger. Each block starts after 0.1 seconds, flowing from left to right across five blocks. The expo and out easing makes the motion feel smooth and cinematic. At the exact same time, I run the same animation on row two. These blocks also scale from one to zero, but because their transform origin is set to the bottom in CSS, they collapse upward in the opposite direction. Both rows start at the same time, so the screen opens like a double curtain revealing the page underneath. Now let me explain how the closing transition works in detail. I start by creating a function called animate transition. Just like before, I return a promise so I can wait for the animation to finish before navigating to the next page. Inside the function, I first make all blocks visible and set their vertical scale to zero. This means the shutters are hidden and ready to close. Then I create a new GSAP timeline and attach on complete resolve. This tells the promise to finish when the animation ends. Now I animate the top row. I scale all blocks from zero to one. This makes them grow downward and start covering the screen. I apply a stagger that starts from the end, which means the animation flows from right to left across the five blocks. I use Expo out easing here, so the motion feels sharp and fast, like a curtain snapping shut. At the same time, I run the same animation on the second row. Because of the bottom transform origin, these blocks grow upward, meeting the top row in the middle. Together, both rows close in like a mechanical shutter, completely covering the page before I move to the next screen. So now you understand the full system. I created a grid of simple blocks, styled them as a full screen overlay, and then used GSAP timelines to turn those blocks into a smooth page transition effect. I showed you how I intercept link clicks, pause the browser navigation, play a closing animation, and only then move to the next page. You also learned how I open the new page using a reveal animation, so the whole experience feels like one continuous flow instead of disconnected screens. This technique is perfect for portfolios, agency sites, creative landing pages, or any project where navigation itself should feel like part of the design. If this video helped you understand page transitions in a practical way, then it takes effort to make videos. And if you are liking my videos, press the like button and subscribe to the channel. It motivates me to make more videos. I will be sharing more real-world animation patterns using GSAP very soon, so stay connected, keep experimenting, and I will see you in the next video.